previously on Make Your Own Raycaster. Welcome back. It's so good to see you. I was overwhelmed with all of your support and requests for a part 2 video, so thank you so much. If this is your first time here, go watch this video to install OpenGL and C, then watch part 1 to get this program. So now in this video, you'll end up with this. Oh, wait, no, 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 that's that's the next video. Ah, yeah, that's better. Textured walls, floors, ceilings, working doors, collision detection, and all you'll have to do to build your own level is edit the values in these three arrays. It's that easy to design your own level. It's going to be fun, so stretch those programming fingers, and let's get started. Here's what we have from the part one video. It's a good start, but we can make it better. First thing I want to do is fix the window scaling problem. Let's create a reshape function with a simple glut reshape window set to our screen window size, and add it in the main loop. And let's also add a glut initial window position to set our window more to the center of the screen. And bam, now we have a window that resets to preserve our glorious graphics. To fix the button input lag, let's create a struct to hold our four button states and name the instance keys. Let's create one function to set the key variable to 1 when the button is pressed, and another function to set it to 0 when the button is released. Add both to the main loop in the correct glut function. Now we can move our old button function to the start of our display function and check to see if the button state is turned on. Now I know what you're thinking. This is perfect and needs no improvement, but let's see what we can do. Our two fixer functions currently take two integers, but we now need a smaller float value. So let's make that update. We need to adjust our values depending on the varying frame rate. So let's create three variables. We will first hold the current elapsed time, subtract that from the previous elapsed time, then reset the first elapsed time to the current. Times in our small input by this difference will maintain a consistent and smaller speed. These values work fine for me, but you can adjust your own preference. We don't want to walk through walls, so we're going to find the dot position in front of the player and check the map if that square is empty. If it's empty, then move the player in the X or Y position. Let's create the X and Y offset variables set to about 20 units in front of the player, depending on the player's direction. Let's hold the player's grid position, and the position plus the X offset, and the position minus the X offset. Same for the Y position. So let me show you what I mean. If the player's X movement within the map is zero, then move the player's X position. Same thing for the Y position. Let's check the player's Y position, but the X position plus the X offset. If it's good, then move the player's X position. Then the same thing for the Y position plus the Y offset. As you can see, our player is admiring the wall, but he's not passing through it. He can slide along the wall too, like a ninja. Now we need to fix if he goes backwards, so he won't go too far into nowhere. Reverse wall collision is very similar, but we just subtract the offset and subtract the movement from the player. Looks like our player is alive and he's not haunting these walls from the inside. This looks good to me, so let's move on to the fun part, adding textures. Our goal is to scale an array of pixels per vertical line. An example, you have three cans of spray paint to paint each floor of a building. Your formula would be the number of floors divided by the number of spray paint. In this case it's one to one, so every floor gets one color. The next building is taller, but you still take the total number of floors divided by 3, so each color covers two floors. 
But what if the building extends out of the view into the clouds, you still take the total number of floors and paint the building, but then you offset it back into view. We need texture. So let's create a single array of four black and white textures, 32 by 32 pixels in size. You can pause and copy my code here, or feel free to make up your own textures and have fun. It will be a black to white scale for values 0 to 1. And Photoshop can be very helpful to see the pixels. We were drawing the vertical lines with a solid line color, but we now need to draw individual pixels inside a for loop. If we compile and run, we hope it looks exactly the same. And yes, it does. It hasn't changed at all. Well, let's change that. Let's first just draw the texture's Y values. We can set our texture Y variable to 0, but create our step value by dividing our wall height of 32 by our building, our, our line height. Then we add that step to our texture Y each pixel, and thank you compiler for catching my spelling error. This is correct so far, but I miss our shading. Let's make a variable be 1 or 0.5 to scale our color to add shading. Looking good, but do you see what happens when we get too close? Which makes sense because we're clipping the line height over here, so we need to move our step formula before this and create an offset variable to be half the difference between the screen height and line height. Update our new texture Y starting value. And that looks better. Now I bet you're wondering how we calculate the texture's X value. The raise X value. Divided by 2 since our textures are half the size. And the percent sign to find the remainder of an integer division of 32. The X variable will return a value 0 to 32 that we can look up in our texture. You see the arrow I added in the corner? It's going the correct direction here, but not if we're looking down. We need to flip the south textures. So if the ray angle is greater than 180 degrees, let's subtract it to flip it. And boom! Let's keep going and work on the other side walls. Notice what happens when I replace the ray X for the ray Y values. The side walls now work, but we need to flip the left walls. So if the ray is looking left greater than 90 degrees, less than 270 degrees, we flip. Now let's put both sides together. Now every wall is textured and facing the correct left to right direction. See what happens if we add 32 to the texture's Y value. Now it skips to the next texture in the array. So are you thinking what I'm thinking? Let's set different walls to different textures by first holding on to the wall value the ray hits and keeping the closest ray wall number. Then add the map value times 32 to read the next texture in the array. We have a small problem. We currently are checking if the wall value is 1, but now let's just say if it's above 0. And sorry to do this now, but it makes sense to have this array for only the walls, so let's update the name in all the places the compiler tells us to. I should have done this earlier. And that looks good to me. Alright, we have walls, but can we make doors? Let's make the walls that are set to a value of 4 act differently. I'm going to say if the button E is pressed down, check the map, if the player's offset is within a square of a value of 4, change that value to 0, turning the wall into an empty space. Let's copy our X and Y offset, but change to a higher value of 25. And our other variables, but without subtracting our offset. You can only open doors in front of you, not behind. 
So if the player's x and y position plus or offset within the map is 4, set the same value to 0. Things just got more interesting. We'll add more to this in the next video, but for now I think this is a good start. Normally it would save out a red, green, and blue value per pixel in the texture array, but for quickly adding color, let's create if statements per map value to create unique colors to add some variation. So this chunk of code draws the walls, let's now draw the floors. We only need to start drawing at the bottom of the wall and go to the screen's edge. We can find the point where the ray hits the floor in the world space by using trigonometry, and project that point onto the screen space. Let's pre-calculate these three variables, then we can find the texture's x value with the formula here, and same for the texture's y position. We can look up the tx and ty within the texture array, and times it by 0.7 to make it a little darker. To find the exact texture map, Let's use the AND operator, and 31 since our textures are 32 pixels wide. And we can copy the same drawing code but without the line offset since we're already using it. And just like that, we have floors. But it's all the same texture, so let's look up the integer map value times 32 by 32 to skip to the next texture, and add this value to the texture array. I know our compiler is going to get mad at this since we haven't created this array, so let's go do that. And again, you can set your own values. And look at how small this code is that we're using to draw our floors. And it gets even better. Most of the work is done for us to draw the ceilings too, within the same loop. Take the last three lines of code, but look it up in our ceiling array, and subtract our screen height from Y to draw it above the walls, we need to create our ceiling array, of course. And can't fool you, compiler. Yes, we already defined these variables. It works, but it needs some color. And all you need to do now is edit these three arrays to make your own level. How cool is that? This console window is kind of distracting, so you can remove it in the compiler settings by going to Tools, Compiler Options, Settings, Linker, and change this one to Yes. You can move your .exe file into a zip folder and send it to a friend so they can play your custom made game. Arraycaster is just so much fun to make and now you know how it works too and I'm sure you'll think of creative things to add to it yourself. If you like this, let me know and I'll make a part 3. And if you post your Raycaster, I hope you tag me because I would love to see it. And I'll answer any questions in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, let's hang out again sometime, take care, and see you next time.